In this video, we'll be going over plant basics. And another reminder that all of the technical background is found at www.mobot.org slash rainscaping. A lot of the resources are found on the resources page of that guide. And I'm going to refer to three uh, landscaping manuals from our Shaw Nature Reserve, Chapter 2, Rain Gardening and Stormwater Management, Chapter 4, Landscaping with Native Plants, and Chapter 3, which is further down the page, Control and Identification of Invasive Species. So you'll see the red dot next to each of these, so find these again on the resources page. And these manuals are robust manuals. You can learn a lot about these topics. Um, and even if you aren't going to go into this much detail, I would recommend just paging through um, and scanning some of this information. In there, you'll find separate um, plant lists for different types of features, such as a rain garden. And you'll see different diagrams and landscape drawings that might help inform you through the process. In our What is Rainscaping video, we talked about right plant, right place, and figuring out which plants might be the right plants for our rain garden. And we talked about the pond edge uh, seasonal inundation plants. Um, but there are more elements to that, which we're going to go into in this video. And this is just uh, an introduction or the basics for choosing your, your plants. Um, you can really deep dive into this. Um, so we'll try to put some supplemental videos and resources under this video on the page. Um, but we're gonna take that right plant, right place situation and talk about right plant, right conditions and kind of broaden that for us. So we'll expand that pond edge example and just talk about the soil in general. Do you have moist soil or dry soil? This might influence the types of plants you're selecting. Additionally, do you have a sunny location or a shady location? This will have a big influence on your plant selection and might vary throughout your site, whether it's your front yard or your backyard, or different areas um, of the area you're trying to landscape. It also could vary during different times of the day, so make sure you're checking in different times and really getting a good feel for the conditions of your area when you're making those choices. We could go back to our technical video and insert this into the intentionality section, talking about what the installation is going to look like to you um, and to your neighbors and community. So varying the bloom time is really important. Finding a spring, summer, and fall bloomer um, to put into your landscape is going to help give the installation some color and some pop um, and show that this is a um, native garden um, and not you know some sort of weed patch that has been left unmanaged. So do pay attention to bloom time when you're selecting your plants. Another thing to consider is how the different plant species are going to interact with each other within your installation. So we talked a little bit about invasive plants. That isn't quite this conversation. Um, simply, we're talking about plants that might be um, not invasive, but more aggressive um, and kind of crowd other species out or um, push them out or overseed and kind of change the makeup of your planting plan. So considering uh, this and matching that to how you're going to maintain the project is a good idea as well. And again, going from that overhead view to a more profile view, um, don't just think about looking down at your plan. Um, but what it's going to look like from the ground level. So consider the different levels of your landscape. So we're not just talking about the plants on the ground, the ground cover. 
we're talking about shrubs or bushes, those smaller understory trees, and then your large trees as well. And again, we're not going to go into great detail about all the plants, but just to give you some motivation um, or inspiration and getting you started on that path toward native plants. Here are just some screenshots. So you've got the yellow fox sedge, the soft rush in the bottom left, and the palm sedge in the bottom right. And I'll go ahead and just reference bloom time one more time. Um, get that pop and that color in your garden. Here's some examples of marsh blazing star, orange coneflower, and sweet coneflower. A few more examples, shining blue star and turtle head. And when we talked about why native plants and why rainscaping, we talked a little bit about the ecological benefits, right? And those co-beneficial relationships that some insects have with plants. So here we have the swamp milkweed um, and the New England aster, which is a nice, uh, that New England aster is a nice fall bloomer. Um, and we have that example to go with obviously the monarch butterfly for that swamp milkweed. Um, and then drawing pollinators in in the fall, um, great to have that New England aster plant as well. A few more examples with the blue lobelia and the cardinal flower. Here's both blue flag iris and copper iris. And to be specific about some shade loving species, we've got golden groundsel, palm sedge again, and cardinal flower once more. Ostrich fern, sensitive fern, and silvery spleenwort. Lastly, we talked about the different levels, right, of your installation. Or your native planting. So thinking about those shrubs and small trees, we've got vernal witch hazel, which is a nice winter bloomer, red buckeye in the upper right hand corner, which is great for hummingbirds, and beautyberry in the lower right hand corner. So again, not a lot about plant specifics, do reference our various plant lists and manuals online for a deeper dive. And enjoy selecting the plants for your site.